G'day, how you going? Ian Appless here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Did you see that painting in the opening credits? I'm going to show you how to paint that today. Quite easy, using this video to follow along in simple step by steps. There's the size of the canvas there, and I will also get some colours going up the screen for you like that. All right, um, now. I've been numbing an hour in which way to do this painting a cool sky or a bit of a warm sky. And I'm thought, sort of thinking visual ways. I want to do a bit of a sunsetty, warmy, turning into a cool sky. So that's what I want to go for here today, all right? So let's get on over here and we'll get right into this. Now, my canvas, straight off the roll, I've cut it to size. This is a quality canvas cloth. It's already primed. That's the way the canvas is produced but now I'm going to condition it for the way I'm going to paint it so down on the colour here I've got some craft white student paint poster paint and I want to add some retarder to that so I've got the the craft white and the retarder tell everyone what that craft white and retarder is Ian, because a lot of people do know what it is and there's a lot of people that don't know what it is all right okay so I've got it's, a, it's just a soft bodied poster paint, student paint, but it's titanium white, but it's not the stuff you get in a tube. And I want to mix that with the retarder. Now, why are you going to mix it with the retarder, Ian? Because what that's going to do, this pile of paint now is going to take longer to dry. The retarder retards the drying time, slows it down, and I'll be able to have pretty much like a magic white on my canvas the way an oil artist does. So what I want to do is just simply get this all over the canvas. So as I can get in my sky and water, because this is going to have the sky and water, so we pretty much need to prime the whole lot before we get started with this craft paint and retarder. And now we've got a nice wet surface to do some beautiful blendings on there. Now I've got Indian yellow, permanent alinzerin and cerulean blue. They're gonna be my three sky colors. So I'm just gonna start off with the Indian yellow. I've washed me putter on a brush. And I don't know, let's simply come across the middle of the painting like so, just straight across the middle and wind it up into there, wind it up. And then same down, bring it down, bring it down. So we've got a nice yellow band in the middle there. Okay, I've got that goobly gloops on the brush. I'm just gonna simply grab a towel, rag, cloth, anything, wipe that, and pick up the permanent alinzerin. And up here, we'll just start from about here, bang. Bring it up to about there. Wind it up into that white, let it fade away, fine. Now bring it down into that yellow, crisscross it, so it's not an ugly join line. And you've got those two colors joined. Simple, pick up some more and do the water half. Yeah, do the water half. Down into the water there, and then back up into the yellow. There we go, beautiful. Simple, easy. Now we're going to clean this brush so we can add the blue. And picking up the cerulean blue. So we'll just start right at the top, push it on, and then start bringing it into that permanent lens and getting rid of any white. There we go. Don't go too close to the yellow because you'll get green in your sky. Don't want green in your sky, do you? No. There we go. And we'll do the same at the bottom on the water half as well. And it's pretty much going to look like a bit of a rainbow theme, but it's not a rainbow. There we go. Get that pushed in there for the water's sake. We've got our water in there. Now that retarder has keeping that wet. I've grabbed myself a decent size pouncer and I want to load up with some titanium white just to get a glare of the sun in our sky. See, I'll, I want this about here. So I'm just going to stamp it, not in the middle, I want it to the left or the right of the middle, so I'm just putting it there. And I want to slowly bounce that around now and just fade that glare 
into the sky with the edge of the pouncer. Now if anything, you can see what I'm doing here, the edges are getting softer and softer and softer. Very easy to do. What I might do, what you can do if you want to do, grab yourself a blending brush and a kitchen cloth and just see the edges of this where you can see the edge of it. You can just sort of stamp it back down into the sky just like so. Pull it through. Yeah, I've done one half. You can see how one half looks compared to the other. I'm going to simply do the same here. Then we'll just gradually get a more open glare in the middle. So I've loaded up the pouncer again and I want to get the centre of this pretty much where I want my sun. There we go. He's stippling quite a bit, so what I might do is just grab any sort of small brush, just something so I can push down those tips. That's that's good enough. I'm happy with that. That's beautiful. That turned out pretty good, eh? Look at that. I like that too. Look at that. I'm I'm impressed. That's it. Now we'll just put a simple reflection of that in the water. So we're going to grab the rest of our white. It's probably got a little bit of contamination in it, but that doesn't matter. Work out where your horizon line is going to be. Mine's going to be somewhere here. And then from the horizon line, you pretty much go from there in a straight line all the way down to pretty much pull it off to there. Now it might not look straight because the angle of the camera, but it's pretty straight, it's good enough. Grab yourself another brush and we want to waterfy that. So let's come across here and waterfy that reflection into those colours. Now I'm going to turn the brush this way just to see if I can get a bit more waterfying the way I want it to go. Because this is going to be quite an attraction within the painting. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now that just needs some shimmer to give it a real bullshit effect. So to get our shimmer, I've got a flat toothbrush. I've sprayed some water there. You might not be able to see it, get some of this paint out, but it is there. So I'm gonna get my flat toothbrush, put into there, and then start pulling into the paint. Because you want this paint that you're gonna flick quite inky. And pretty much, let's get some shimmer on that. You're pretty much covering up that pull down that you put with the pouncer. Control it, there we go. Beautiful, I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to grab some titanium white on my hog bristle fan brush just to get some kind of maybe cloud in the sky. So let's say here, get something radiating right across the sky. Now I think my sky, I might have buggered around too much. We'll have a look with the blending brush. So I'm going to blend this into those sky colours there. Pull some of that across like so. And give it a bit more twist and turmoil. Just getting some kind of cloud in our sky there. And then we're going to add some yumminess to this because it's all kind of sat down to the one value. I'm pulling, getting some pull marks into that because it adds distance in your far part of your sky there. You'll see how it looks. I want to get this brightness toned down on that side there. And then maybe can pull that across there as well. Let's probably put something maybe here. go coming away from our sun so I want to get the base flattened down twist and turn all the rest of the cloud I'm leaving those little fingers there for a minute because I want to pull them in front of the sun if I can there we go now we'll pull them if we can just in front of the sun but try not to destroy your sun 
nice and straight, bang, wiggle, wiggle, and then start pulling in a straight line. Just adds more. I don't know, that looks nicer in front of the sun. So we are gonna add some yumminess to these, but I'll just finish off the clouds and I might put something, I don't know, here, there, and something there, peripheral cloud coming off there. Now I just wanna quickly blend this into the painting and then we'll just simply add the yumminess to those clouds so they don't look so dull and flat. Oh, see when you pull them, I just love that. Look at this, it's all brush stroke and we're gonna simply turn it into a cloud. Look at that, your movements are creating the loveliness. There we go, look at that. So look at the clouds, they look empty. We're going to add the, the yumminess which gives it pretty much the 3D effect. So that bit's gonna be in front of there, that bit's gonna be in front of there. And all we do is simply, softly, sit that yumminess down, getting rid of its hard edges and sitting it back into that cloud there. Okay, getting rid of its hard edges, dancing it around. And you can see how that looks a bit more cloud-like. Same with the other one to the right there. Let's put a little bit of, I don't know, the sun really hitting the bits of that cloud there where you feel the sun might be hitting it and glowing it. And simply, look at these brushes, you just pull them back together when that happens. Sit down the hard edges to a degree where you're happy with. Very easy, and that's the yumminess, adding three dimensions to your clouds. Okay, I wanna get some permanent alindrin and start mixing with my cerulean blue, just till I get the value of the distant mountain, the color I want. And now we're gonna work out where we want our mountain. So in this one, we got our sun there. I don't wanna go and put it right in the middle there. I wanna have this to the side. I know my horizon line's about here, so I will Bring this maybe somewhere up here and coming down there. So I'll come it up. I'll just go lightly first, right in the background. Bit of a jab there and he's coming right down there. There's pretty much my mountain. And now I wanna use this flat brush, paint it in, get the edge pretty firm. Now, I'm not using a knife. Why don't you use a knife here, why not? Because I'm painting in acrylic, a lot of the oil artists use a knife, but sometimes a beginner might find it hard to get that behavior happening with a dry, chalky acrylic paint. So I'm pretty much going to stamp it on with me flat brush like this, getting the top edge concentrated first like that, getting it pushed right onto the edge. And then I'm, if anything, I'm slowly blocking it in, but in an arching way. Why arching? Because I want to try and just fade it down into some mist. Like so. Now I've cleaned that same flat brush. I'm just picking up some titanium white. And I want to come from about here I'll go to about there first, watch what I do. I'm pushing it onto the bottom there and then I wanna start blending it up into there just till it stops. Don't go too far up and then bring that down. Bring that down, bring it down. Just till about here I suppose. And then you wanna start slowly stamping it up so it's getting lighter and lighter. Now what I'm going to do, watch, pull, 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 that's, that's it. Grab the same side of the brush, pull, 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 pull. Don't worry, the, the bottom of this is going to get covered. Don't worry too much about that, you see. 
we're worried about here. Now this part of the mountain, grabbing that mountain colour that we had, grab some of that with some more white. And pretty much from the point, I want to add a zig, see this line here? I'm going to make a zigzag if I can, coming down with my brush. That's me zigzag. That creates the mountain, giving it kind of a 3D look. Okay, that's very subtle, wasn't much there. See what we've done there? But now we want to grab the wipe. Give the brush a wipe, it's full of paint, but just give it a bit of a wipe and then pick up the white on it and then just gingerly. stamp some snow on there. Just at the very top of it, because it's a high mountain, way in the distance, and this snow is just at the top of it. What I will do is I'll pull this side down just like so, and the same there. Okay, I've mixed up more of the mountain paint. See here, we want to come roughly within that shape. I'm going to put it on and pull down, put it on and pull down. Just to get some kind of reflection of our mountain. Pull down. We're going to have trees in front of this. This is just the inner background detail there that we need for this mountain. About there, we'll go about there. Start pulling it down. Now it's a bit see-throughy, so we'll we'll fix that up just like so. There we go. Get it right on there. We've got the actual shape that we need. So I'm getting rid of the see-throughy aspect of it all. Now we can grab some white I'm doing here. Grab some white into it. Make use of that white that you got. Simply come from here as well. Pulling down, pulling down. Now see there's a nice white glare there. You could emulate that in your water just by probably getting something there. Wipe your brush and give that a bit of a blur as well. Okay, I've got a big flat filbert type of brush here. And I want to get some brown and black and mix up a base colour. So I'm pretty much going for a blacky brown colour as I do. We'll start from this side. Keeping it level, I want to get this, let's say from about here, and getting up. So I'm going, how can I explain this? I'm going above the horizon line and also below it. There we go. Above it. There's a horizon line there, and also below it. See? And I can go whatever height I want here, I just bring it down there. Boom. There's my horizon line there. Now I want to gradually just scratch that into the water paint there so it's nice and scratchy on the very edges. Just see there? It's very scratchy. Don't go so far ahead where it's going to dry up on you. I'll show you what I mean. You want to, you can get your top done. Let's just say there's our top. Bang, that's the top done. All right, get it nice and hairy out there. It looks beautiful when you do it like that. Now the bottom, we're going to simply emulate the bottom. Do a little bit at a time, then pull it down while it's still wet. There we go, pull it down while it's still wet. And then just block it in. 
Now I'm going to come to the other side. The other side, if anything, is a bit closer than that one. So same thing again. So our horizon line is pretty much here, okay? And we want to get this in front of the mountain. So we'll, we'll put it roughly where we want it on the top, right up there. Just use any brush that gives you beautiful foliage, tree, distant, mid-ground, canopy trees, whatever, okay? Get that to you. Play with it until you're happy with that. Get that to your horizon line. Now, if anything, like I said, this one's closer. So I'm not going to have them all in the same line. I'm going to bring this one down a bit, let's say there, to me. Oh, I know where it is. And now we're going to bring this into the water, but pulling it down while it's still wet. Just pull it down while it's still wet. Scratch it while it's still wet. And I can use this reflection to cover that boo-boo up. Pull that down while it's still wet. And bang, you've got your reflections in the water as well. Okay, I'm gonna wet a, a little filbert. <coughs> this can give me nice, more detail on what that dark colour I just put out there. I've got sap green. Now I want it to be sap green, but to turn the lights on, I'll just put a little bit of yellow ochre into it. This is going to be the dark colour and then I'll simply highlight it after this. Now, I want to distinguish this one from that one. So I'm going to leave that dark there. Get this right from the top of the dark. Don't leave a dark edge like that. Always get it right at the top of the dark. Now I want to finger this down into the darker where the um, horizon line is. So my horizon line's about here. This is just going to finger down, leaving the darkness there in the horizon line. It's important. Gives it depth underneath your bush. Stagger it a little bit from the horizon, but and then you're going to simply pull this down into your reflections as well, like that, leaving the dark, and just simply pull it down following the top like so. I'm going to come down, making different clumps And then the highlight on this really makes things look more detailed, real, real, realism type of stuff as well. So bring that down there. See, I'm just putting it on and scratching it into the reflection side of things. That's all you have to do. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but I wanna bring, like I said, this one is in front of that. So I wanna bring this. This one's horizon line is a lot lower. This one's horizon line's about there. I find the yellow ochre when you're tinting your greens is a more of a real colour value than just yellow. And I'm pretty much going to go like this all the way across this side of the painting as well. I'm going into the middle of the painting. I see your horizon line dark area there. Every now and then, just dribble past it so it doesn't look like a big solid black gap. You don't want it to look gapulated. And the pulling it down just gives it that wet blurry look like it's in the water as you can see. I'll quickly do here now. Get a little bit in front of there and then we'll pull this down as well. Now we'll give this a dry and we can just simply highlight all that. So I want to grab 
the rest of the yellow ochre and mix this up for a highlighted colour. Now if you put just, let's just say, cad yellow in there, it's going to be very vivid, loud, bright. Let's say more on the cartoonish side. That's the word I would use. <clears throat> but I just feel if a beginner can learn to use yellow ochre a lot in their paintings, it's just going to give it that real highlighter colour. You'll see what I mean. Now I'm just going to quickly finish mixing this with the brush. Get it a bit inky because if it's not inky, it won't stick. So let's add our highlights. Hang on, let me get this in there. Though. See the black? You want to just dribble over that. Dribble over that black. There we go. Now let's get me. There's not enough on my brush. Come on, get it on your brush, your dag. There we go. Dribble it into that black there. Boom. Now, everywhere you put that first colour of green, don't go with this colour over all that. You just got to here and there. And then we simply get this stuff and highlight this in the bottom area as well. So you've got two values of green in the water reflection also. And you can see how this green highlight with the yellow ochre is a bit more on the real side compared to really bright cartoony yellow. Just periodically highlight it where you feel light might be dancing on top of these. See I'm dribbling a bit past the green into the black as well, creating depth. And then the same here, pull it down, pull it down in those areas. So I've added a little bit of white into that. Let's say where the sun is. Let's just get some more minted colours out there. Over here. Just Let's just do a bit radiating here. This has just got the white in it. I'll do the top half first, roughly where I want it to radiate. About there. About here and something there. And then simply in here as well with that very gingerly i'm just dancing along i did one there i'll do another one here to show you the the bits leaning over the darks let's say a bit fading down from there and pushing that in it's just adding distinct color values from the top half to the bottom reflection area so back onto this side now, so we're going to highlight this. I want to get this bit now. This is where we put things in front and behind, down there, coming down. There we go. See that solid black line at the top here? I want to disguise that with detail and highlights. You don't want... I've done it with rocks as well. I've shown people, but I have seen people still leaving that black solid edge just get rid of it, please. As a beginner, you would not believe just how much you are capable of doing. It's just knowing and seeing what can be done, how it can be done, and you do the same procedure, or even if you need practice to do the same procedure, you can do it. It's just that easy. these colours in the reflection. See, it just makes everything detail and more real. I pretty much mixed up just with what was on my brush with the yellow ochre, and now I'm just putting the dead wood colours within, I feel it might need where it needs it. Just giving it that real green vibe. It's pretty much like a mustard colour. You can keep going with the trees like this until the cows come home, but I think I'll stop there. 
everything's dry I want to just put this water surface the film of the water on top of that but down here I've got me flat brush I'll pick up some of this craft white okay just pollute the brush contaminate the brush hairs enough and then pull some of this glaze because this will dry see-through sort of we only want a little bit of white in it you can grab your bullshit stick for this if you want depending how you're painting it I want to get at least the water's edge right against there now that's a bit too heavy so I'm gonna come again wipe the brush down a bit because I don't want to destroy too much of me reflections there and this is just a lot more pleasing to the eye than what big knife marks of white paint do come across where you think your water level is there we go, beautiful. No, that's better than the other side. It's not as harsh and heavy. You don't want to destroy all your beautiful reflections. And just simply come along and scallop your water. Like, stagger it. Stagger it. I'll, I'll put a foreground in here, so I'm just trying to think we'll probably start from about here now I've got me burn umber in the black again I've got me put her on a brush and I want to make that big dark brown color again pretty much black but it's got a hint of brown within it and we're going to bring that right across the front of the painting so I want to come from about here there there that'll do we'll just map that in like so get your paint a bit inky so it's going to transfer and then get all the bottom done. And then we can put, it's up to you, you're the artist, you're the individual, you're creating your piece of art. It's up to you how you want to finish your foreground. I might grab me the mongoose fan brush, I've just wet it. I'll grab this colour, pulling it into there, and I want to distort this line here so we'll will come up distorting this line and I'll make my mon my fabulosus mongoose grass coming into the painting so we've got come from there and then start distorting that line get nice sharp bits there this line we want to camouflage that It's just a matter of playing with your brush and working this out. It's quite easy to do once you get the knack of it. Now you can see that line there still, right? See this hard line? That's what we've got to do. We've got to get rid of that. So start distorting it, camouflaging it, hiding it, whatever the best way you can. And another way you can distort it is get the brush right along that line. You've distorted it like that. So now your line is like this instead of that straight brush line then you can start adding this mongoose grass again in your whichever way you want and you've got more up and downy bits uneven bits have a look see how you i'll get a bit thicker here to hide that have a look and see how your work's going get a bit of a bigger one right up into the sky there like that it's amazing how this stuff grows you can do that I've dried the canvas and I've got viridian green and cadmium yellow medium this is going to make our green for the foreground of quite a vivid color so we want to value of this and enough to make a highlighted value of this as well so that'll do totally different color green than what's out in the middle there and then start from about here and bring this into your darker bits like so careful as you do it practice don't just watch a video and think all right and then just do it into a painting 
because you need to practice and when you know how to do a subject that's when you put it into a painting now I've had some people asking should I paint my paintings on canvas paper or canvas you practice on whatever you can cardboard canvas paper you don't want to practice on canvas and once you practice how to do trees skies clouds sunsets rocks whatever then you put all that practice onto a canvas that's when you start using a canvas once you've completed practicing on a subject there we go we're doing this so we're pretty much getting this we're going to get this all over our front foreground there some of this can be darkened back later i'll show you what i mean by that when i get to it Hopefully I don't forget to show you, but I'll get the black again and sort of dribble up into this green, because green is nice. You're pretty much going over all the darks that you did with this vividy greeny looking value, which is viridian green and cadmium yellow medium. I'll quickly put the black back in there like I told you before we highlight it. Grab the dark colour again, which was on your canvas. Everything's still wet. And just from the bottom, where's the camera? Just from the bottom, everything's still wet. You might want to just feather up some more dark bits within that green because you want the bottom very dark. Nice and sharp little stamp bits, but everything's still wet. You want it wet when you do this because it's going to sort of blur and smear and fade and scrumble together type of thing. You know when you're using a flat brush and you're scrumbling? Well, this is the same sort of principle, but you're stamping it on with the darker colour and you're scrumbling it with the same brush stamping method. And you can see, let's, I'll just move out of this side here and I'll show you from this side to the other side just how different it looks. See here the darkness there instead of there. With it here, it looks like it's going that way, but when it's not over here, it just looks flat. We're getting rid of that flatness look and creating a look that goes over. And then we'll, when we highlight this other side, you'll just see the bullshit, the magic, the fantasticness happen within the painting. Okay, now we'll dry this and highlight it. So to highlight it, I've just sprayed a bit of water there on my glass palette. I'm going to pick up the cadmium yellow medium and then I want to start adding that colour into it to its a highlighted value that I want. Don't want it too similar, you want it a lot more brighter. That's enough. That's more than enough. You don't want to highlight the whole lot, otherwise it's going to turn it flat again. We want to try and imagine that that's the side of the hedge and that's the top. We want to highlight just the top area if we can. So I'm going to go nice look I'm barely touching now boom barely touching getting that right in there so we're going to there we go around there dance it to that black a little bit that is stay stamped on there Not too much. Feel free to hit the join tab below and become a member of my YouTube channel. You get emojis and badges and you get perks. You get different perks to the patrons. Patrons get their perks, early access to videos, and members get perks such as badges, emojis, one-on-one um, -on -one video call with me if you need it and member shout outs. So check it out, support my channel by becoming a member or simply becoming a patron supporter every month. Now you can see how we've created the depth and the top in front of what's in the painting. Now I'm just gonna grab some titanium white with some water in me um, script liner and, and I'll autograph this and whack a frame on it. And message me below, comment below, tell me what you think 
And I want to thank the people who do support my channel as a Patreon or the members below. Much appreciated. And remember my brushes that I use for blending and the yellow putter on a brush. Message me on Facebook, links below if you want to buy them. And also my paintings are available to buy. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got some mongoose grass in front of a lake with the sun ready to set over this beautiful mountain scene there. And I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing this painting. I hope you learnt something in the process and comment below if you have something to ask me. But be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.